West Lake. Um, Becky, beautiful work, and thank you to the Urban Ecology Center. Isn't this a great place? It's bringing people together with nature, and I'm amazed at how nature brings people together, too. I've been finding that out more and more um, with my shoots lately. Usually I'm alone in the field and swamps, and uh, lately I've been not alone in the field with, in Florida with lots of other photographers and lots of chigger bites and fun things like that. But uh, what I like to relate to with my photography is that every single image has a story behind it. It's all about the experiences out there. And so what I like to do is try to inspire people to see themselves through nature, and that was what um, Danny was talking about, that the Urban Ecology Center's mission is too. So they obviously do a great job, and, and thanks to them we're here today. So all of these images have a story behind them. And I hope to serve as a bridge between that experience that I have and the messages that nature gives to me to bring back through my images to give to you, the viewers, to either have a similar ex experience by looking at the images, whatever that experience might be for you, or to go out in the world and be inspired to, to find those moments for yourself. So I'm going to start with first a little bit of an interview that's a, an interview I did with Outdoor Wisconsin. I also show some of my images along with some music and then a poem that I wrote that was another experience I had in nature. It was a day I couldn't photograph, it was raining hard, and I went out instead because I longed to be out there and I just laid in the rain, laid in the grass, <laughs> listened to the birds, and let the rain fall down on me. So you'll hear that poem. Then after that, I'm going to just go through one experience that I had in nature, actually many experiences that I had with a particular covered up snowy owl, male, and I'll show lots of pictures of him. So I'll just tell stories about the experiences, about the cold, about meeting other people. And then, if you have questions after that, it would be great. So now let's see if I can. Which is really how we make our images, that he sees things. And we, she talked too about the connect, I was reading her artist statement, and I really like, she talked about the connectedness of all of us and how we're all one. and, and um, and even though we're very different artists, our approach on that is very similar. So when I go into the field or go photograph, I go in with that intention of not taking a picture. And I go in with making it. Taking to me implies going in and grabbing something that's not mine and yanking it back into my world. And I want to go into theirs and become immersed in theirs. So one of the stories I have about that was my recent trip to Florida. And the, art of the royal turn that's hidden behind there probably all saw, was one of many turns and gulls that I saw out on the beaches of Sanibel. And I went and approached them slowly. I watched for their behavior. I watched to make sure that I'm not, not making them wary. And I laid on my belly to photograph. And I was so entranced with my experience just being involved in them that they were in the circle. And I was on the outside of the circle. And I looked back after just a little while and they had engulfed me into their circle. So it was truly a unique way to explain what it's like to really be connected, to be one, to feel that oneness of. And that's often an image now that I think of when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep. Because sometimes we have those stressful moments where we feel overwhelmed by these things that we think are so huge in our lives. And when I go out there, I realize how small those things really are and where the big picture is really all about. So now, though, I'll just kind of go through some of these snowy owl pictures, a lot of them. So um, I'm just going to go through some of them a little bit fast. And there we go. There's no music to this, so if anybody wants to sing, you can feel free. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, the, these images are a little bit washed out on the, on the DVD, so. Um, realize that I do know exposure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this snowy owl was in Horicon Marsh this year in Horicon National Wildlife Refuge. And um, a lot of times the birders list, the Wisconsin birders list, alerts me to some of these great, great opportunities. We called him the celebrity owl because there'd be lots of birders out watching him and lots of photographers too, which was really the first experience I've had with seeing more than myself out there with the, with the animal. And this bird, there's Highway 49, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Horicon. 
it's a very, very busy highway. Semis are going through and all kinds of all kinds of traffic. And this bird perched on one side of Highway 49, and this was his favorite perch, and he would swoop down across the highway to um, I should be going through this a little faster to catch prey, to catch mice and, and whatever. He's an Arctic uh, tundra native and comes down sometimes during the winter, either for, some of them actually just migrate south. I was reading about that. I thought that they were all coming down because their food source gets scarce. And so anyway, oh, that's me awning. But part of the whole experience is really about just observing long periods of time. So nature teaches, for me, has taught me patience, perseverance. I'd go up to Horicon, I'd leave my house at about four o'clock in the morning and get up there before sunrise and wait, look for this little white guy in, in his branch and then wait for the sun. And he'd, about, he'd be hunting all night, but sometimes he'd give me a little bit of time to get some shots as the sun came out. Then he goes off onto the ice and sits for the rest of the day, till about three o'clock, and he'd come back and start hunting again. And of course, he's not, not predictable at all. So like I said, sometimes I'd go up, get no shots at all. And people would say, don't you get disappointed? And, but that's all about the patience, about perseverance. So you keep going back and, and uh, checking him out again. And this is what you get. So that to me, besides just the images that you see, is really what making the photograph is all about. That's the art behind it. And the things that go through your, your head and your heart, more like your heart. You get connected to these animals when you're out there. They're not a real timid bird. They're not afraid of people. They're really focused on, their, um, on what they want to do, and that's eat. There he is sitting out in the middle of, on a muskrat house. That's one of his perches for the, for the most of the day. And this is some, these are some of the other guys I, I saw when I was out there photographing. At first, when I went out to photograph the snowy owl, I thought, this is a rough-legged hawk. I photographed these guys for a while. So all the winter characters of the land. Oops. Remember to do it that way. This is a little screech owl. He's in a wood duck box. <laughs> and um, there's a story behind this photo. There was the day that I went out to photograph the snowy owl, and as I was approaching Highway 49, I saw that there was an accident. I thought, oh no, somebody's hit the snowy owl because he's right <laughs> by the traffic all the time. So I get there. <laughs> terrible me. I'm not even thinking. I could have been a person. <laughs> and, uh, so I get there and the police stop me and they're trying to tell me how I can go around to get to Wapan. That's where Highway 49 goes to. I said, no, no, there's an owl in that tree. I'm going to photograph him. And he's like, well, not right now. You're not. So it wasn't long and the people, there was nobody hurt. So that was a good thing too. <laughs> but anyway, I saw him. This is what he looks like in the morning when I go up to see him. His little white form up on, in his tree. He's always in that tree. He usually was, but not predictable. Sometimes he he changed. And this is in the first morning light, and just how he ruffled his feathers. He almost looks looks angelic in these. Mm -hmm. What do they eat? They eat um lemon lem lemon lemmings lemmings. I can never say that word in the Arctic, but here they eat voles and and mice and. Other birds. And how big that is? Um, this is a male snowy owl. Um, you can, and, and they're less, they're smaller than the females. Four pounds. Um, I'm trying to think of what their wingspan is. I think it's um, three feet or so, three, four feet. The female snowy owl is, is this one over here, and you can tell she's a female, uh, probably a young female by all the black dark barring. 
he's a, a male, and he might be a younger male because he's still got barring on him, but really, really all white 